In this database, we are going to perform actions on tables. We are going to update records in, at a large scale. So you have to realize that when you do that, that things can go wrong. And when the transaction that you are trying to perform stops in the middle, you don't know which records have been updated and which have not. So you need somehow a way to roll back your transactions or your actions in the database. You do those in tables. So in order to know how to handle this in VBA, we need to know the structure of the JET database engine. That is the tool that helps you to talk to tables, queries, and that means record sets. Forms, reports, etc. They are not part of the JET database engine. They are part of Access itself. So how do you do that? In order to understand that, you need to know that when you work on a database, on a table or a query, you are in a specific database of the collection of databases. And that database is locate, located in a specific workspace, in the collection of workspaces. So later on, we have to talk to those entities. So let's say we are dealing with the following form. It's a very simple form. And in that form, we are going to update the hourly rate for all the people. You can filter and say, I only want to do it for certain people. But let's say we want all the hourly rates updated. So I put a button here on top and that has behind it VBA code. So when I go to the design screen and I go to the properties of this button, on the click event, we have an event procedure. It's the following event procedure. Private sub command collection, that's how I call the button, click. I declare variables of the DAO. So you will find that under tools, references. And there should be a reference to the active database, active X data objects library. If you cannot find that in the list, you may have a different version of access than browse for acedao.dll. DLLs are always libraries. Once you have that reference, you can declare a workspace of the DAO type and a database of the DAO type. Then we have two simple variables and we set OWS to the database engine from the collection of workspaces, the first one. Everything in Access starts at zero. It's zero based. Then we set ODB to, from that workspace, OWS, the first database in the collection of databases. These are the, the default workspaces and databases. Then we ask, how do you want to update those hourly rates? We ask that with an input box and let's say by default we want to multiply it by three. That is a huge hourly rate increase. I did that on purpose to create trouble. So we say when that goes wrong, on error, go to error trap. And the error trap is a label right here. Then we say if there is no error, begin the transaction of OWS. Create an update query. We have an SQL statement, update the table employees and set the hourly rate to the hourly rate times as update, 3 or 1.05 or whatever you want. And then we execute the first one in the collection based on that SQL. But don't forget this guy, database fail on error. So if it fails, it goes into an error trap, and here is the error trap, and it rolls back all the transactions. And we tell the user it, it needed to be rolled back because there was a certain error description. Then in case nothing happened, everything went wild, I'm going to force an error. Do you want an error to occur? If they say yes, we raise from the, from the error object error 13 means 
there is an error, so it goes into the error trap again, so it will never execute the next line. But if everything goes fine, then we commit the transaction. After we begin the transaction, we commit the transaction. And then we do a requery so you can see the results in the form and in the table, of course. Don't forget to put before the error trap an exit sub. That means if everything goes fine, it exits the subs. Otherwise, it goes into the error trap and it rolls things back. That's what we have at this moment. So let's see how it works. We are going to the form and I'm going to update the rates. I'm going to do a multiply of 3, which is an enormous increase. And we get a rollback message. One or more values are prohibited by the validation rule. I did that on purpose in the table. The hourly rate is set between 6.65 and 50, so it can never go over 50. Some of these hourly rates went over 50. So we had to roll back the transaction. I'm going to do it again. And this time I'm going to say I, I just want a very small increase, 1.05. And you will see, and you will see that some of these hour, that all hourly rates probably go up. Do you want an error to occur? I'm going to say no. And you see it went up. So it does work if everything goes correctly. I'm going to do one more time. I'm going to multiply by one. It has no effect, of course. Do you want an error to occur? And I'm going to say yes, so I'm raising error 13. Rollback needed because there was a type mismatch. Error 13 is a type mismatch. So that's what we got out of here based on the following simple code, but it's a little more complicated because we had to work with workspaces and databases and begin a transaction and roll back if needed. You probably need to know much more about access. This CD-ROM that you can find at genesispc.com discusses all these issues. It gives you a great overview of all the tools you will need in order to work comfortably with access. If you want to know more about VBA in access, then you need this CD-ROM. You can find it at genesispc.com and it has all these parts that we discussed already and you know, how do you do transactions. Uh, this is for Access 2007, it also works for Access 2010 and 2013.